people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the Underground Laboratory, where together we're going to create some awesome comics because this is Making Comics 101, and this is a bonus issue. This week, we've been talking about cover design, so I want to dive a little bit deeper into, I guess, kind of how I approach designing a comic book cover. Now, lately I've been doing a project, and I'm going to share some of that stuff with you, even though it probably won't go public for a little while, the finished product anyways, but I thought this would be a good opportunity. Because in the previous video, I went through and I showed what I thought made some really good comic book covers. One of the things I talked about quite a bit was the homage cover. So that's going to be sort of the focus, because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm kind of looking back at some of these old comic book covers and trying to recreate them and do my best to pay homage, pay tribute to some of this, just the awesome history of comics. Uh, so anyway, so as you can see right here, I've got the cover for A Weird Science. Now this is EC Comics. This is one of the things I went into on the previous episode. I want to show you some of the process for a comic book cover that I already put together for the 100 Days of Making Comics Anthology project. That was the Werewolves and Unicorns. But anyway, so I wanted to show this to you guys first. Uh, and you can see there, there's there's some things, and Weird Science is, wasn't the only title by EC. Uh, they had a number of titles, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Vault of Horror, Haunt of Fear, Weird Fantasy. I mean, they had all these different types of comics, but the one thing that was, you know, consistent throughout all was this sort of banner that they had running through. And it always had, right here on the side, it always had the genre. So whether it was fantasy or terror or horror or science or or whatever, they it was always on the side here to let you know, you know, what the story is about. And then, of course, we have the title, really bold. And then their logo, like twice repeated on either, either top corner here. And, of course, more information like the price and everything. And this one doesn't really have it, actually. But uh, typically they would have these three circles and, you know, or maybe that was, no, that was, uh, maybe that was just more of the horror titles, but they had these three circles because they were, the books were more anthologies, so they would have three stories and then they'd have a different person introduce each story or a different character. Uh, the most famous is probably the Crypt Keeper, which looked a lot different in the comic books that he did in the uh, old HBO series, if you remember that. Uh, but anyway, so I wanted to also pay homage to that. So let me kind of show you this. Uh, this is what I, th well, this is sort of the sketch. This is what I started off with. And I want to show you just how I approach comic cover. A lot of it, something like this especially, has a lot to do with the type. So finding the correct fonts and everything. Um, as you can see here, this is kind of how I start off. Uh, and I just, you know, I put a bunch of different fonts in. Here's some different ideas or or you know just fonts to pick from here's me sort of recreating the style of that ec comics logo but with the 100s uh, on the side instead of the genre i've got that stack type here that's the uh the 100s and i wanted to do something different i wanted this to look very um all hand drawn but rather than you know Rather than getting out my ruler and drawing all these letters out, which could be very time consuming, I just found a font that I liked, and then I can go in and hand draw over it, because that's why this is all blue line here. So I can, when I can print this out, I can go over all this stuff by hand. And this is a technique, and I'll show you some examples that Art Adams does quite a bit when he does a lot of uh, cover recreations, where he'll take classic covers and he'll recreate them. And he usually updates the style of them, and sometimes even expands, like he'll go beyond like where the normal board of the comic, he'll continue the illustration out and have some interesting stuff going on in the borders outside the actual comic. So um, that's that's sort of the thing that I'm trying to do right now. But anyway, as you can see, I, I just start with laying all these different you know fonts and everything out. Uh, and then, and sometimes I might, I don't know if this font was like this or it was already weathered or I added that. But um, now this is in Illustrator. I usually start my layouts in Illustrator. And if you can see here, let me just click on this, this font. So this is a font called House Slant. And if you go up here through the character, you can kind of, you get a little preview of, you know, of the font and everything. 
Uh, but sometimes, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to see. So I actually use a program, it's called, or it's actually, it's not really a program, it's just a website you can go to called Word Market. And uh, it's free to use, they do, you know, they've got ads on here. I think there is a pro account that if you want, you can get. But here, you know, I, you can see I just typed in comics, comic books. And what it does, it, it actually loads all the fonts on your computer and then it'll show you, you know, whatever you type in. So this to me is just a more efficient way to look for the fonts that I'm looking for, especially when I'm recreating, you know, I'm trying to recreate the look of a cover and you'll see as I get further into some of these covers, some of these styles of these covers I'm trying to create to find fonts that resemble those because it's not always so difficult or so easy. And sometimes you need to actually go find fonts and download them or purchase them or whatever. So anyway, that's where I start off. And let me switch over here to Photoshop here. So we've got that. That was sort of one of the inspirations here. This, this is the final cover. And as you can see, this is where I was talking about with those three circles and everything here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so I did this in two parts and you can see how I, this was all hand drawn and then I scanned it back in, but you can see how I kind of chipped away. You can see the difference between the, the fonts here. So I gave it a little bit more of an effect. It's just got more of a natural look to it rather than just the, the computer generated type. You can see here's the original and then going over, I was able to kind of add some different effects and chip away at the type and just make it a little more original. Uh, and as you can see, that, that main image isn't here because what I wanted to do, because it's a mirror image, it's this woman staring in a mirror and, and finding out she's turning into a werewolf. So I drew that separately. So on the back cover I've got, I've had it so it was right, it's basically, you know, the normal, you know, where you could read, basically read this shirt. She's got a shirt where it says unicorns are my spirit animal or all the, all the other type in here. But then on the actual cover, I reversed it. So you can see it's all backwards because it's a mirror image. So that was one of the, one of the ways that I, you know, put together this cover to sort of pay tribute to that old EC Comics aesthetic. But I've been doing more of this kind of stuff and I'll show you some of the stuff I've been working on. Well, first I want to show you this. This is going back to what I was talking about with the sort of Art Adams tribute covers. This was a tribute to the first appearance of Wolverine, which was an Incredible Hulk cover. And he basically redrew it, kind of updated it, made it look quite a bit more dynamic and everything, uh, which is really cool. Even, even the banner up here, that's all hand-drawn type. Uh, so I'm sure even this stuff here, everything on here is hand-drawn. Um, and I just love that. I think it's really cool. But what I want to draw your attention to is the, the style of the layout of the comic for Marvel Comics. And you can see up here, it's got the name of the comic, The Incredible Hulk. And what I realized, what I found out in doing some research, the reason why they had this, uh, and you know, if you remember the little corner box, in this case, it's a corner circle, I think, before they actually introduced that little corner box, um, where you've got the character, and you've got the name of the, the comic. And I was kind of wondering why they did that. Well, the reason why they did that is because back when these were on spinner rack, sometimes all you would see is just this top portion of the comic. So they wanted to, you know, you may not see the actual cover image down here. So you might not see Wolverine fighting the Hulk. So what they would do is they'd put their characters up here. So anything below that might be obscured by other comics in the spinner rack, uh, you're still able to see who the main character is and even even up here where it's written down. So uh, I just thought that was interesting. But anyway, so you've got the name of the comic, you've got Marvel Comics Group banner here, the Comics Code logo here, the pricing information, this sort of little circular thing which in later years would turn into a square. But if you look at that, now I want to show you what I've been working on. Let's see here. Okay, so here you can see I've sort of duplicated this. Now I've changed some things around because I don't want to infringe on any copyrights. And again, this is sort of an homage. So instead of Marvel, I'm going with Mighty Comics. Um, but it's got that same look. And this is a good example of have, you know, looking through all those fonts. And sometimes that's the most time consuming thing is finding the right fonts that match and everything. So anyway, so I found similar fonts and I was able to sort of recreate this cover. Here's another one. So this this is kind of when I was introduced to comics. This is what they were. This is what Marvel was doing. And I don't think that aesthetic is as cool as the one I previously showed you. But because it it was something from my childhood and everything, it has a number of the X Men that probably appeared in this issue. 
All right, so here you can see I've got that same sort of look. Again, tracking down some of the <laughs> some some of the, the fonts and everything to, to try to make it as uh, you know as true to what they were doing as possible. Okay, so here's another one. This is Amazing Spider-Man. This is when they first started to introduce the sort of that that corner box here. Uh, it's a little different than the one I just showed you, where it's a little slender, more slender. You still got the name of the comic up here. I don't really know what goes up here. Uh, and then Marvel Comics Group down below. And of course, I did my best to sort of do that as well. Let's see. So here you can see, you know, we've got the uh, comics code up here, which I kind of altered it. This one says approved by the Comics uh, Commission instead of Comics Code because that actually is um, trademark from, I think the Comic Legal Defense Fund owns that, which is kind of funny because I guess, I guess if you were, if they were to sue you, the question, the question that people are asking is if, if the Comic Legal Defense Fund were to sue you over using their trademark, could you use the Comics Legal Defense Fund to, you know, as your legal defense? I don't know, but anyway. It's an interesting kind of quandary. But anyway, so here you can see, again, we created that look for, for this particular layout. All right, so one of the things that I found interesting, I thought that little corner box was pretty exclusive to Marvel. I've seen other comic companies do that, but not, but more as homages to what Marvel was doing. But I don't know if this Archie comics, if this predates Marvel, because it's very, very similar. Uh, even with the banner here and everything, and even some of these, instead of, you know, Archie Comics Group, like the Marvel Comics Group, it's so similar, you know, that I was, I'd be curious, I have to do some more research and find out which, uh, which came first, Marvel or the Archie, but these are quite similar, so, uh, yeah, that wasn't exclusive to just Marvel, so that, that's interesting. All right, so of course, you know, Marvel isn't the only comic company that I grew up loving. DC was another one, and I wanted to show this. So this is this is really cool because you actually get to see some of the paste up here, where the the Batman and Wonder Woman logos plus the Brave and the Bold logos were all pasted up. And you know, nowadays it's all done by computer, obviously. But even even the you know the name, each one of these different things, the little code here, the the name of the issue, the month the price, the comics code, all of that stuff was pasted in. In addition, also the, you know, all the other type. So I wanted to pay tribute to that as well. So I did some DC. So, uh, and just like I did Mighty for Marvel instead of Marvel, I wanted something, I was trying to think what, what, what would be good substitute for DC. And because it's Detective Comics, I thought, what about Private Eye Comics? So I put PI Comics instead of DC. And then uh, again, tried to search some similar fonts, similar layout, and sort of recreated that. Uh, DC also went through a number of different changes. So here's, and this this may have been, this is probably earlier, but this is another Art Adams tribute, but you can see this checkerboard pattern. I don't, I'm curious if he actually, he probably drew that checkerboard too. But it's got the comics code, it's got, you know, this checkerboard pattern, and then this, uh, this little DC logo that looks a lot like, so it seems like there was a lot of borrowing and stuff because this looks a lot like the EC Comics logo. Um, and this is back when when it was National Comics. It wasn't, doesn't even say Detective Comics. It was owned by National Comics. So uh, again, I did my best to pay tribute to that. So let's see here. So did the, com the you know, the checkerboard pattern. We've got the, the price and the private eye PI Comics logo here. All right, so here's another DC comic. This is Commandy. This one's this one I found interesting. It's got the DC logo in the circle plus the price, really big, 20 cents here, and then some of the information here plus the comics code and everything. You can also see some of that paste up, and I think this looks like Jack Kirby art to me. So again, here's sort of my homage to that, and I've got like a floating scent sign that I gotta get rid of. <laughs> All right, now next up, uh, again, we've got Tales from the Crypt. This is another uh, EC Comics title with some awesome art by Jack Davis, one of my favorite artists. I mean, he just did brilliant stuff. I, I love how he straddled, you know, he would do this just horror, you know, horrific stuff and then just really humorous stuff for like Mad Magazine and stuff. And it was just, you know, brilliant artist. Um, 
So, I, I mean, I already did show you a little bit where I already paid homage to that, but this one's a little different. So this one I went with, uh, so EC I think is entertaining comics. I think that's what EC stands for. So with this one, I put amusing comics. Uh, and then the, of course, the genre suspense and the pricing. And then I added those three circles there. So that's sort of my EC homage cover. Now, this is an interesting one. This is Charlton Comics. Now, you know, they're kind of, they weren't like the biggest comic book company. And, you know, a lot of their comics weren't all that fantastic. But for whatever reason, I like, I just, I always like this logo. I don't know. I don't know if it's the colors there, the, the red and the blue and the way this, you know, has a little slice pie here with the price and everything. I just, I just really like this logo. Um, and again, they've got, it's a sort of a variation. They've got sort of the corner box down a little lower under, you know, all the information here. But I like that, so I wanted to pay tribute to that one as well. So this is sort of what I came up with. So I went with just general comics. It kind of changes the C to a G. Well, the, and the one one C for the comics and one G for the general and put in the you know the price and again just try to duplicate that I have no idea what this star is for but it's it's on most of uh, most of Charlton comics and so last but not least I wanted to go a little more modern and modern's a relative term when it comes to comics these are still these comics are still I don't know 20 30 years old or something back in the 90s so uh but of course image the first some of the first image titles and image you know it's very reminiscent of the marvel type thing but they did something interesting with that that image eye which they're still using today i don't know if they still put the people inside you know the characters like marvel did but they're still using that image eye so i wanted to do do that as well so here's what i came up with image for image i put icon instead and because just icon, I wanted the shape of like an eye. So I wanted it similar, but different enough that it's not infringing on any trademarks. That it, again, this is an homage, looking for the correct type and everything. But anyway, so that's some of the stuff that I've been working on, just cover designs, paying tribute. But I wanted to just show you my process of, you know, how I'm using reference and how I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the classic comics and, and finding out how, what they, you know, what techniques they use, what fonts they used and just try to recreate those and so that I could you know pay tribute to them so anyway I just thought that would be sort of a fun not so much an exercise but just a little deep dive into my process so hopefully you like that hopefully you got something out of it and uh, yeah I will see you guys later that is all hey thanks for watching if you like what you saw and you want to see more hit that subscribe button also you can follow me at surfworks on social media and now you can support the work that i do on patreon do you like making comics then go to surfworks.com and pick up the comic maker starter kit it's packed full of fonts brushes templates and more and best of all it's totally free